Hello and a very warm welcome on ESPN Crick Info Match Day T20, the final day of the group stages of uh, IPL 10 is uh, now upon us. We've got one hugely consequential game and one completely inconsequential one on uh, Sunday. This is the consequential one. Pune against uh, Punjab. It is a straight out knockout and this will determine the team that the fourth team that will uh, make its way into the playoffs. Two very consequential gentlemen with me, Brad Hogg and uh, Ajit Agarkar to set this one up. Right. Now you guys have been in a situation of this kind. It's win or go home. How do you approach this as a player? 45 seconds. You just go out there, have fun and uh, play it like it's a final. It's as simple as that. You just back your game plan. Uh, and just go out there and try and execute it. You know that the other team's under pressure, their players under pressure, and it's do or die. There's no two ways about it. Go out, have fun. And uh, Punjab Kings 11, they've got the momentum going. Super Giant have got the momentum going. Whichever team wins this game, they're going to be very confident going into the final series, thinking that they can knock off uh, the other three teams that are there. Because I think both teams have upset uh, all three teams at the top top list. Absolutely. Now, uh, good good on your 45 seconds. But uh, let's actually look at this from the perspective of the two teams, Ajit. From Punjab, they've been in must-win situations last two games as well. And they've beaten big teams, Mumbai and Kolkata, in their last two matches. Pune had a golden opportunity to not even be in this situation and let it slip. Does that any of that count for anything in this uh, kind of game? Not really. I mean, the one positive that both teams will look at is uh, whoever wins the game gets to the playoff. You know, at least it's in your hands. You try and play the best game possible uh, and the result usually takes care of itself. Both teams have turned their seasons around. Uh, you know, Pune is slightly better points-wise uh, but terrible net run rate-wise. So, uh, and like you said, uh, Punjab uh, needed to win two big games against two really strong teams which they've done, uh, which not a lot of people gave them a chance to. So, no, it's, it's an ideal scenario for both teams. At least it's in their hands. Uh, and should be, you know, it's probably the perfect way to finish uh, the league phase in the IPL. I mean, the last game still uh, has meaning to it. I think out of the two teams, a great coach of ours, John Buchanan for Australia, said, control the controllables. So, it's a big game. Whoever controls the controllables uh, will win this game. Yes, and uh, there's no need for the calculators. It's very simple. So if you're a fan, you just have to watch this game. And a neutral fan, just watch this game, enjoy it. And the winner takes all, the, the loser goes home, right? Why have Punjab done so well off late in particular when they've been under the pump? That's our uh, second talking point. With uh, with Ajit as well as Broad now uh, as well as Brad now <laughs> the reason for that is they've been very good in the death overs bat as well as ball let's put the batting numbers up first for you and it tells us a story doesn't it uh, Brad just or Broad if whatever you prefer <laughs> but Brad look their run rate in the last uh, in the death overs has improved exponentially in the last five overs so they've got a lot more runs and as a result of that they've been able to give their bowlers something to aim at. Well, if you look at the column there, 21 wickets in the first eight matches which they've lost and eight wickets in the last five matches which, which, they've, uh, which they've won and, and done well. So it's about keeping wickets intact in those latter overs and making sure that batsmen are set uh, going into those final overs. You don't want to be losing wickets through that middle period, setting yourself up for a big, uh, a, a big feast in those last four overs when you know that the opposition bowlers are in trouble. So it's just a matter about setting it up, making sure you've got a batsman that's set in those final four overs to take on the uh, four bowlers of the opposition. Yes, well, Brad's doing excellently on his 45 second rule this time. He's just, just nailing it. Now, of course, there was the 230 game the other day where Punjab nearly lost having scored 230. But their bowlers too have been doing a job. Mostly their seam bowlers come into the equation. But they've got some spin options now and Ajit can reflect on this for us. That economy rate in the last five matches in the death overs has improved for Punjab as has the average. Uh, they do have the likes of uh, Mohit Sharma, uh, Sandeep available and Tevatiya's Jana job too. So that aspect of their cricket too is better in the latter half of the season. Yeah, and that's what's helped them get, get a few wins. I think clearly the bowling's their uh, weaker sort of uh, suit and you know, I mean the batting's a lot stronger than the bowling. 
for the bowlers have turned around when it's mattered i mean you still won't call that bowling lineup the one that will win your ipl yeah. but they're doing a job and uh, for them the batsmen are putting the runs i mean they they did need 230 runs the other night <laughs> it was probably one of the flattest pitches ever yes. to have played cricket on so uh, sandeep sharma does a job with the new ball as well he picks up early wickets which helps uh, and then when you keep picking up wickets through the course of the innings makes life a little bit easier when you bowl towards the end i they'll have to keep doing the best possible that they can because uh, they in my opinion they're still light on bowling they'll have to get everything out of the mm. bowling that they have which at the moment they are so ishant in or out i wouldn't play ishant <laughs> he was the best bowler last time come on <laughs> do, what do you think about uh, mohit sharma especially and sandeep in the end they are executing their yorkers but mohit he's bowling the knuckleball and a few uh, variety of slow balls out the back as well as nailing that quicker yorker uh, do you think that's something that he's worked on his game? Yeah, he always bowled a good slow ball. Yeah. More so back of the hand, uh, the knuckle balls, new variation that he's uh, got. And it's the Yorkers still, I mean, okay, the, a lot of the batsmen, if you try to bowl Yorkers in the stump, get under it. But it's still a good ball if you can bowl it correctly. You, know, you, you, you still, if, if it's a good Yorker, you'll go for a single if you can't get a wicket. Any bowler that has a Yorker. Uh, will usually uh, try and escape. Yes, do, yeah, but do you think the yeah. advent of that extra slow ball, the knuckle ball, coming into his variety, is not allowing the batsmen to set themselves up, and that's making the Yorker a, a more prevalent ball? Mm, yeah, for sure. But I think you still need to have the ability to bowl the Yorker. Not oh, everyone yeah. does. Yeah. And uh, fortunately for Kings Eleven, him, him, and uh, <laughs> Sandeep at the moment are. Yes, no, did bowl a great one. last over, but uh, remember he did go for 57 yeah. in that last game. But there was carnage, as Ajit said. All bowlers went for lots of runs. And as Harbhajan Singh suggested, maybe it's time for bowling machines uh, well, to do the job. Well, if he went for 60, they would have lost. <laughs> <laughs> that's true. Right, uh, that's Punjab. How about Pune? They've got one, one real star weapon, and that's Ben Stokes. Uh, he's been... He paid, they paid them a lot, paid him a lot of money, but he really has returned that investment back, ball, and in the field as well. For, remember that magnificent catch the other night? Here are the bare numbers that Ben Stokes has contributed. More than 300 with the bat that averages over 30. Uh, the uh, the uh, Lots of wickets in there, 12 wickets, which is quite good. And the economy rate is low because his overall numbers were actually over 9 in uh, when he came to the IPL. So he's actually done better. Uh, Ajit, that's like playing three players in one and he's actually that for Pune. He's held them together. Individual performances from him have been huge. Yeah, I mean, we all thought that there was a lot of money to uh, pay that particular player. Look, he's the best all-rounder all in the world at the moment. Uh, it was still a lot of money to pay because they didn't have too many in the reserves. Uh, they could have, but he's obviously turned the season around for them or he's been the catalyst really. Uh, look, it's, it probably took a little bit of time to settle more with his bowling than his batting. Uh, and he's probably realised what needs to be done in these conditions. So he's not had a lot of experience uh, of playing in the subcontinent. He's still you know, fairly new to international cricket. So you've got to give him that leeway and uh, you can see the quality player that he is. He's turned the season around for himself. And uh, that's affected uh, the way Pune has played as well. No, he's, he's had a terrific season. I think uh, worth every penny that they've paid for him. Yes. Uh, not just that, and as uh, Ajit does a good job on the 45 seconds as well, remember that Ben Stokes might actually be leaving at the end of this game and may not be available. So Brad, a great opportunity to make one final contribution, get the boys over the line and then back them from back home to uh, actually lift the title. Yeah, well, it is a big opportunity for Ben Stokes to really set uh, the season up for the Super Giant and get them through to the playoff. Trevor Bayliss, if you're listening back in England, please don't let Ben Stokes come back to England. Let him stay here, please, if they get through to the final, because uh, if Super Giant miss Ben Stokes through that final series, they're already missing Tar here. That is two big holes that they've relied on heavily throughout the tournament, and uh, that's going to dampen their success in that finals uh, campaign. And we don't want to see that. We want to see the best teams there. But three men of the match innings. I think the, uh, the 100 that he got against Gujarat Lions, when they were three or four down, the way he batted there, the way he composed himself, showed me how good a player this guy is with bat but he's uh, excelled with the ball as well. He surprised me with the ball more than the bat this series. All right, so that's where we are uh, at the moment. This is a huge game, guys. You want to make a prediction? Uh, I think I'm going to go for Pune to win this one. 
Uh, I want Pune. I, I'll go for Pune. But if Ben Stokes is going home, I would like Kings Eleven to go through because they'll be uh, they'll have a more consistent team going into the final series. All right. Well, uh, Brad Hogg's uh, hedging his bets a little bit. Well, on I'm this not hedging one. my bets. So I'm just thinking about the tournament moving forward <laughs> because that's two big holes for yes. Super Giant. Consider it, man. All right. So that's where we are. 4 p.m. start uh, in this game, and it promises to be an absolute humdinger. There's so much. Well, 8 p.m. at the Kotla and a completely inconsequential game, at least as far as the league table is concerned, but perhaps not so much for the teams. Uh, the Delhi Daredevils are hosting the Royal Challengers Bangalore to end the group stage of the competition. Uh, and uh, from a Delhi perspective, it really has been a case of uh, too little, too late. And that's the conversation we'll have with Ajit and Brad in a moment because Delhi have been playing quite well, believe it or not off late uh, and we'll establish that very very quickly because look at their uh, results in their last few matches they've won four of their last five but then they lost two of their first eight this might actually Ajit be the last time we see Zahir Khan as a professional creator you don't know about that <laughs> we thought that could happen last year but from a Delhi perspective I guess in front of their home crowd there's enough motivation here to finish on a high because they've been playing so well yeah, I mean, it's another one of those seasons, uh, again, for <laughs> Delhi, promises so much. Uh, I think they had the team uh, if they performed or if they made the right decision. It's a lot of decision making, whoever is making those, whether it's the team management uh, or the captain, uh, you know, it sometimes baffles you. I think there's a, again been a lot of overthinking. You, the positives for them, Samson, uh, you know, someone like a Shreya Sayer didn't start the tournament, played well. So there are lots of individual positives. Unfortunately, as a team, they couldn't put together uh, enough games to make them qualify because I thought they had potential to be a top four team for sure. But you want to finish, uh, you know, the tournament on a high, and for a high for them would be a victory. Uh, <laughs> That's the least uh, they can give their fans. Yes, and Karun Nair in the last game oh, also yeah, came yeah. up with a with a uh, with a good innings. But from a let's look at it from a Bangalore perspective, they've actually had a one week kind of break almost. They've not played for over a week. Uh, Virat Kohli is captain of the Indian team as well as uh, this one, and this is perhaps his last innings in a professional game before a big tournament. So all of these factors make it a important game for him. And don't forget, this is kind of his home ground too. Well, I can't believe you said they've had one week break. I know it's between games, but their whole tournament, it seems like they've all been on a holiday. I must admit, RCB, out the start, they had so many injuries. AB de Villiers, uh, one of their main batsmen, Coley, as well, their skipper. Uh, didn't get them off to a good start, but they've been playing musical chairs with their team. They haven't been able to have a settled uh, combination, and that's probably caused their downfall throughout their tournament. Uh, their bowlers haven't stood up. They put, spent big money on uh, Time or Mills. Uh, he didn't deliver what they thought that he'd deliver. And um, yeah, at the end of the day, batters haven't made enough runs. Bowlers haven't uh, bowled well enough. They have been very poor for the... Uh, Lineup that they've got. Yes. The, the, the only positive for Virat Kohli is he doesn't have to take a flight after this. That's true. He's got to he drive goes, home. <laughs> goes, goes straight home. He's probably been home for the last few days as well. But that's it. That's the end of the campaign for the Delhi Daredevils as well as the Royal Challengers Bangalore. Who knows? Maybe we'll get a thriller to end the group stage.